you don't have to look very far to find evil during World War II. Josef Mengele, Heinrich Himmler and Josef Kramer to name just a few. Some of the world's most heinous acts came to pass at the hands of these people. But what happens when the devil comes in the form of a saviour? When someone offers an escape from the ravages of war only to find themselves in a new hell? What kind of monster would take the trust of terrified refugees and make that fear a reality? Marcel Petio was that monster and rightfully dubbed by the French media as Dr. Satan. Petio was born on January 17, 1897 in central France. He misbehaved frequently as a child, firing his father's gun in school, sexually harassing a female classmate and stealing anything he could get his hands on. He also tortured small animals. He underwent a psychiatric evaluation where he was diagnosed with mental illness. It's not clear what mental illness he suffered from, but the psychiatrist said Petio was quote, an abnormal youth, suffering from personal and hereditary problems, which limit to a large degree his responsibility for his acts, end quote. This led to charges against Petio being dropped. Marcel Petio would transfer schools and eventually graduate. No one would question his intelligence. At the age of five years old, he was reading five grade levels above his age. At the beginning of World War I, Petio volunteered for service and fought with the French army. During his military career, he was injured and gassed. Unlike most people that find a more disciplined way of life through military service, Petio continued with his kleptomania, facing several disciplinary actions for stealing blankets, drugs, supplies and other soldiers' belongings, which landed him in jail and psychiatric hospitals again. A couple of years later, in 1918, he was released and sent back to the front line. Weeks after his return, Petio was finished with military service and was discharged when he wounded himself, some say with a grenade, others suggest he shot himself in the foot. After World War I, Petio used his military benefits and veteran status to enrol in medical school. He would finish school in only eight months and started interning at a psychiatric institution. He became a full physician after his internship. He developed a strong reputation as a doctor and he was only 25 years old. He was charismatic, charming and popular. One flyer said, quote, Intelligent patients have confidence in him. And another one read, Dr. Petio treats but does not exploit his patients. This could not be further from the truth. Dr. Petio secretly had his patients enroll in medical assistance so he was paid twice. He gave them very addictive opioids, some of near fatal doses. Pharmacists even questioned the doses he was giving to children. Petio told the pharmacists to mind their own business. While he tried to maintain a strong professional reputation, Petio's private life was in shambles. He had a reputation as a thief, stealing from family and stealing from strangers alike. In one apartment, Petio was evicted for stealing furniture. He also got into conflicts with the government over his disability payments, but continued to receive them, although at a lesser rate. In 1926, Marcel Petio started dating Louise Delaveau, the daughter of one of his elderly patients. Delaveau disappeared during May of that year, and neighbours later said that they had seen Petio load a trunk into his car. Police investigated, but eventually dismissed her case as a runaway. That same year, Marcel Petio decided on a career change, that of a politician. He ran for and won in a landslide the office of the mayor of Villeneuve. He had hired accomplices to undermine political opponents and it ended up working out for him. As a politician, Petio also stole from the treasury. The next year, Petio married a 23-year-old named Georgette Leblay. By 1932, financial irregularities were popping up under Petio. That year, his office was revoked. Despite no longer being mayor, he would be elected as the youngest general councillor. However, that job wouldn't last long either, as he was accused of stealing again and lost his seat. Soon, Petio and his wife moved to Paris, where he would commit the worst of his crimes. In Paris, Petio continued his kleptomaniac activities. 
he was accused of stealing from patients on multiple occasions. But it was his medical practice that attracted real controversy. Petio would advertise himself using false credentials as a doctor in a hospital where he was actually a patient. He fabricated fake endorsements, which other doctors complained about. In the time before World War II and German occupation, Petio would give substantial amounts of morphine, which would lead to him being investigated for a narcotics investigation. Petio would also perform illegal abortions and would steal from his dead patients. He also engaged in tax fraud. He almost got held accountable by the legal system for his malpractice and stealing from his patients. However, the Germans invaded France in 1940 and conquered Paris, helping Petio escape accountability and giving him a new opportunity to take advantage of the public. Marcel Petio claimed to join the resistance, and there is some merit to the claims. He gave fake medical certificates to French citizens who were enlisted for slave labour by the Nazis. He treated sick and wounded soldiers, but he later exaggerated his involvement in the resistance. Then, Petio started his killings. He told people he could help them escape the occupation and the Vichy government. He told people he could arrange for passage to South America, particularly Argentina. He went by an alias, Dr. Eugene. He would prey on the most vulnerable of French citizens, Jews, resistance fighters and criminals seeking a new life. He charged people 25,000 French francs, a considerable amount of money at the time. Under the guise of Argentina being very strict on refugees, Petio insisted they needed typhoid inoculations, only he wasn't injecting them with the vaccine. Instead, Petio would inject them with cyanide. After he killed his patients, Petio dumped their bodies into the river. However, when body parts started washing up, Marcel Petio had to devise another plan. In 1941, he purchased a house and continued his practice until 1944. Apparently, he wasn't doing a great job of disposing of the bodies, or there were just too many. The stench of decay and the continuous smoke billowing from the house's chimney became too much for neighbours to take, and they called the authorities. What they found was beyond any nightmare they could ever imagine. When the police entered Petio's house, they found coal stoves burning full blast, body parts mixed with coal and quicklime. 33 pounds of bones, 24 pounds of unburnt body parts, 11 pounds of hair, including 10 full scalps, and three trash cans of human remains. There were sinks and tubs large enough to drain bodies of their blood, and if that wasn't gruesome enough, authorities found a soundproof room with shackles embedded into the walls and a peephole centred in the door. Police issued an arrest order for Petio immediately. Since the order to arrest Petio was issued by the Germans, French resistance fighters assumed it was because he was killing Germans and Nazi sympathisers. So with the help of his friends and others, Petio was able to disappear, changing his appearance and name. Soon though, Word got out that Petio was not who he appeared to be. He was no hero. He was a monster. While quote undercover, Petio was rumoured to have joined a team of resistance fighters that were sent out to search for the so-called Dr. Satan. However, his luck would run out on Halloween 1944 when someone recognised him at a metro station where he was arrested. Marcel Petio claimed that his victims were collaborators, but officials weren't buying it. He then changed his story, telling the courts that the people that were missing were relocated to South America, as promised. The piles of human remains told a different story. In the end, Petio confessed to 19 murders, though parts of 23 people were found in his house. He was suspected of a lot more, anywhere from 60 to upwards of 160 people. After only three hours of deliberation, the jury found Marcel Petio guilty of 26 premeditated murders. On the day of his execution, the original guillotine malfunctioned and his date with death was postponed until a portable guillotine could be found and delivered. On May 25th, 1946, witnesses to the execution said that Petio had a smile on his face as the blade dropped, spilling his severed head into the basket. <laughs>